Hello, everyone. I like starting the presentation with a sense of humor. If anyone can read over there, it's mostly geared up for surgeons. I'm sure they won't like me after this presentation. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right. <laughs> so mine is actually the, the easy one. Um, having air entering the circuit, ECMO. Um, ordinarily, you wouldn't have it happen. So I guess I'm one in a million uh, over here. So I'm gonna cover two topics, so on the VV and on the VA. VV being the venous venous, uh, so we connect the venous side, and then on the VA where we connect, obviously taking blood from the venous side and giving to arterial side. So for sisters who are here, I think this mostly will concern them. It's essentially uh, how do we work with the perfusionist, the coordinators, the surgeon, and everyone who's around. So my task, is the easy one in the sense that you just have to differentiate the size of the bubble. The smaller ones, how quickly do you act? The bigger ones, and, and again, who do you call right away? Before we go to the next slide, um, I'll start in the chronological order. So we have started with the bigger bubbles, uh, which is the, the most damaging one, is that you immediately would want to call the coordinator, the perfusion, the surgeons, as quick as you can. Obviously, I'll go through the details and how do you go step by step, but the smaller ones where, which makes the machine to alum are really not that serious. So again, depending whether you're doing a VV or a VA. VA, we tend to cringe a lot, but for VV, that's where we actually, uh, we don't get worried. Next slide, please. All right, um, how I'm gonna look at it is, if you look at the patient, so if I may just move it here. All right, so, it's a patient, it's a pump, it's a perfusion, so the, the assisting systems is his. So we'll move it backward. So if you look at the air or the bubble, you first have to realize where the location of the bed against the pump. Is it same size, higher and lower? We actually covered this with Dr. Fabrini, if he's here. So the bubble, you're looking at backward, not frontward. When you say backward, you're looking at the venous side, right, to the machine, and then back to the patient. That's the only way you can look at a bubble rather than other way around. This is obviously in the last two years. If you look at the current data, essentially just looking at a bubble, whether it's gonna cause damage or not, and also the safety mechanism that are put on the machines, whether it's a Novalang machine or a McCabe system, they both follow the same system. Is that when you have a bubble immediately, what happens to the machine and then what happens to the patient? Remember I said the bigger, the smaller ones. Next slide, please. All right, so just go backwards. There we go, okay. So if you look at the air venous line on the pump head, so we look at the three possibility, possibility uh, air infused into RA through IV lines, which is highly unlikely, but it is possible. And the venous cannulation and the positioning. And then also lastly, loose or open connector to the negative pressure. If you realize I said venous, move it backward to the pump and then back to the patient. Now let's look at the management. If you look at a small amount of bubbles entering the system, uh, what normally happens to the machine, the safety mechanism to trip will be to say there is an air in the system. Now the, the circuit will go ahead if the bubbles are too small, but if bubbles are too big, or they actually we call it an airlock, uh, Yvette just told me now, my learning colleague, if it's 10 mil or more, so it's about this size, the pump will actually stop. Next slide, please. So on the cross air management system, that's why we say it's an airlock. Um, when do you call and who do you call? So if you're a sister in charge, you're checking the patient hourly. So the first person to call, obviously your coordinator will call the team around you. So what then do you do? I'll actually go through this later uh, so that it makes sense, we follow it through. So if you look at the, the machine itself, this is the, the airlock. You clamp off the pump on the cannula side, now, before you actually do the first two, depending whether you're doing a VV or you're doing a VA, which is very important, um, I wouldn't say you don't have much time on a VV, but it tends to be forgiving. But on the VA side, we literally have to go on immediately off the pump. Hopefully, you will have the surgeon and uh, intensivist next to you or anesthesiologist. That tends to be tricky because you 
you want to come off, imagine that a lot of your volume is actually in the pump with the air. So in other words, you, you make sure that the patient does not aspirate more air while you clamp the patient. And then the perfusionist, in this case, obviously they're not close by. You ask whoever's around who has the power to basically say, look, you give FiO2, which is 100%. Uh, we'll cover that next, next slide. And then make sure that the patient has volume. All right. Okay, we've covered that again. So we'll cover this at the end. They attached the 50 mil Lua lock syringe to tap Lua lock connector. On our current systems, much more safety sensitive. So in the sense that in the boat system, unlike the one before, these are about two years old, is that we've done so much improvement in terms of the air management and air lock that when the machine trips and then you actually clamp, you don't have a lot of three ways coming out of the machine. So you only have one area to look after between, between the patient and the pump. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the second part, management. Um, we'll cover this much more in details once we go around. If I may ask both companies, just help me out to introduce air, because if I do it now, you need to see it very close. So we'll first introduce the big bubble. You see what happens in the machine, it trips and then off. And then the smaller bubbles, it will just keep on alarming. And I know this from Hilton experience, is that I'll get a call saying, look, the machine is actually alarming. What do I do? Uh, I think for the sister side is that they need to know when to act and when to leave the machine alone. I'm talking about the no Novalang and actually in the McKay system. So the bubbles are small enough. You've got a flow circuit. If I may just show you, you want to zoom in on board machines. So this is called flow meter, right? It's one dimension, meaning that it's coming from the, from the circuit to the patient. What it also does, it also looks after the bubbles, the size of the bubble. The smaller they are, it will let them through. So what will normally happen if you give me a call or say my other colleagues, the call, the call goes follows, is the machine stopping? The sister will probably say no. We we'll say, look, give it a minute. If it does stop, you call me. But if it goes on, which means it's small bubbles that are actually going through, right? Okay, that's one system. And the second one, the same thing on the Novalang. It's got what we call flow sense on the flow probe. So it does both the bubbles and also does the flow direction to the patient. So again, um, and I got this from a vet, is that if you've got anything 10 mils and above, the machine will actually trip and stop. It's just a, to prevent the patient from aspirating the bubbles. Okay, next slide, please. Now, the A in oxygenator, remember I've split them into two. You've got a VV and you've got a VA. Now, in terms of our scope, when I say our scope, I'm talking about the South African setting. Um, I know Dr. Fulton is very particular about touching the, the oxygenator. These are the following reasons why he wants to do that. It's very easy to pull a blood gas and then aspirate air gas to the circuit, and then you can't actually de it. Right? We do not know how much you can aspirate. So what we've done, adopted as a unit, is the perfusions will do pre and post. Um, I'll show you what pre and post mean, where we do the blood gas to actually see the oxygenator, whether uh, it's still working, uh, the saturation pre and post the membrane. But in doing that, you go on the positive side where there's just too much pressure, where you have a likeliness of actually aspirating air. Now, the safety mechanism is that the oxygenator itself will keep or trap the air. But if it's obviously big enough, it will alarm, but it won't go to the patient. Um, yeah, okay. So what do you do in terms of management? Both on a VV and a VA, it's not really much you can do until the perfusionist can come. So it gives you a bit of time if the, the air is actually trapped inside, some call it a canister, we call it the oxygenator. Next slides, please. All right. Um, when you look at the gross air on the arterial side, we, we covered the venous side. Right now, we're talking about the arterial side. This gets all the surgeons really perspiring uh, because it doesn't really give you much time. That A is, is already going to the patient. How much time do you have to call all the supporting staff? Uh, I can't really give an answer to that. But essentially, when is the sister hourly checking where the bubble is actually going? 
Smaller bubbles are likely might go through, but the big, uh, the big airlock is a safety mechanism the machine will trip and then stop. So immediately as a sister, you know what to do as a follow-up, but it's on the arterial side. I, I would let the surgeon to actually advise uh, on a question time because um, there's two school of thought. Some say you clamp immediately and then you DA with a syringe, but you don't really want the perfusionist um, and the sister, not that we can't do it, but you don't want them sitting with a syringe on the arterial side, which is very, very sensitive. So I'm assuming Dr. Fulton will scream. So we'll, we'll leave that up to him. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. <laughs> All right. Um, I, on the management side, I want to just jump on over here. To the other back, um, there's three school of thought. You tip the patient, but you tip the patient before you call a surgeon, or you, you tip the patient and then you went for intensivist, or you went for perfusionist. And again, it's a bit of a gray area when you're dealing with air. Now, remember, this is not forgiving. It's on the anterior side. In other words, it's going directly to a patient. I'll, again, I'll ask my surgeons, the landed colleagues, to actually cover this for us so that at least we all know uh, what we should do should the, the need arise. Now, here on the arterial side, oxygenator rupture, I think that will be covered my, by my colleague over there. The loose connector, the cannula side, I doubt that the surgeon would do it, but should it happen, um, and also the heat exchanger leak, um, and I'll, I'll just show you once we do the practical session, on the venous line tap left open, second fill with air. So if you look at all these three, we'll cover them with one talk on both systems, all, all these three, because I think the talk about air is how, if a sister looks at a patient, which one is more dangerous? Is it on the venous side, on the oxygenator, or on the arterial side? And I can confidently say that on the arterial side is actually the most dangerous one depending also where you're looking at. Are you looking at a VV or are you looking at a VA? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Without, you know, we'll cover this also on the practical side. Next slide. Do you want to just open up this side for me quickly? Um, Pamela and a colleague, I, I took this one uh, because it sort of encompasses what we're looking at. You just go down a little bit. This is what we call bed bubbles. So a lot of these questions are probably going to arise on the floor. So uh, on our presentation, it's very easy to just click. It goes very detailed on how you should do as a coordinator, the nurse, the perfusionist, including the surgeons. But the questions that I would like you guys to, to in this case, is to move them towards the surgeon for two reasons. We've got three centers that we possibly might do our ECMO. We want to adopt it with the sister and also the perfusions. On our perfusions, we're actually fine. But now our sisters want you guys to understand what a surgeon would likely be looking for uh, in terms of all these units. So if you look over there, it actually goes quite in details, which is what's going to be the question. I'm just making sure that you don't ask me too many questions. You can I just refer there? All right, I think that's my presentation.